Take your Bibles, which we know this morning are God's clear, communicated revelation to his children throughout time and eternity. These words, again, that we read this morning are words that are God-breathed. They are without error. They are true. And they will never, ever fade away. So take your Bibles, hold them up, repeat after me. This is the Word of God. It is more powerful than a two-edged sword. And I love the Word of God. Father, this morning we again hold up your word and we realize as your children without it, there is no navigational tool to make it through this life. We thank you for your word that is a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path. We thank you for your word that heals our soul. We thank you for your word that feeds our spirit. We thank you for your word that gives us a solid foundation when everything around us is slippery sand. And this morning, we as your children ask you, Holy Spirit, to speak clearly, precisely to each and every one of us as we soak in this spiritual food that we so desperately need. We love you. We pray this in the powerful name of Jesus, our Savior, and all God's people said, Amen. Amen. Psalm 111. Psalm 111. Again, I'm reading from the New American Standard Bible. Very clearly, God's Word says, Praise the Lord. I will give thanks to to the Lord with all my heart, in the company of the upright and in the assembly. Great are the works of the Lord. They are studied by all who delight in them. Splendid and majestic is his work, and his righteousness endures forever. He has made his wonders to be remembered. The Lord is gracious and compassionate. He has given food to those who fear him. He will remember his covenant forever. He has made known to his people the power of his works in giving them the heritage of the nations. The works of his hands are truth and justice. All his precepts are sure. They are upheld forever and ever. They are performed in truth and uprightness. He has sent redemption to his people. He has ordained his covenant forever. Holy and awesome is his name. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. A good understanding have all those who do his commandments. Praise the Lord. I will give thanks to the Lord with all my heart. Isn't that so good just to let that soak in again? How important it is to remember that we express admiration toward God. The whole universe echoes that same reality with us this morning. We praise, we bow our knee only to the great I am. We give thanks to him. Thanks to him with all of our heart from the innermost being of who we are to the tip of our fingers. We just give thanks to God. We give thanks to him for his mercy and his grace. Thank you, God, for giving us hope for eternity, hope beyond time, space, and matter, hope beyond what we see, feel, taste, touch, and hear, hope for heaven. Thank you. Thank you, God, for forgiveness. 
For some reason, you've opened our eyes and allowed us to see that Jesus is our Savior. Thank you for forgiving us, God, of all of our sin, as far as the East is from the West, never to be remembered again. Thank you for your word that is our solid foundation in this crazy and mixed up time. Thank you, God, for giving us a reason to live, for me to live is Christ. And thank you, God, for giving us a reason to die. We live for Jesus and we will die for him because of all he's done for us. We give thanks to you with all of our heart in the company of the upright and in the assembly. What a privilege again, as Randall mentioned, for us to be together corporately worshiping God. It's important to worship God on our own, isn't it? That's vital to keep that relationship going. But there's something unique and powerful and special about the body of Christ coming together. And we do that. In the company of the upright and in the assembly, great are the works of the Lord. They are studied by all who delight in them. We saw that last week, all the great works of the Lord, the heavens, the stars, the sunset, the thunder, the human body. And we were again reminded that even science, the more they look into the microscope and the telescope, the more they see what design, and that reflects a designer Great are the works of the Lord. They are studied by all who delight in them. Splendor and majestic is his work. Ah, amazing. Remember the little hummingbird? The praying mantis. Niagara Falls, the Grand Canyon. Splendid and majestic is his work. Hmm. And his righteousness endures for how long? Forever. God is righteous. That is his essence. His plans are righteous. His providence is righteous. Everything about him is righteous. He doesn't have to act that way. That's who he is. His righteousness endures forever. That's why we're here today to praise him for that righteousness. He has made his wonders to be remembered. And as Romans again reminded us that God has created all creation with one reason to show that he is real and that nobody has an excuse to say there's no such thing as God. You cannot look at all of his wonders and not know there's a God. They speak loudly even though we can't hear. They speak loudly. And we pick up where we left off last week. The Lord is gracious and compassionate. The Lord is gracious and compassionate. As we sit here and worship the God of the universe, realize that we are but dust. We are but dust. But God has been gracious enough to breathe into us the breath of life. We are weak as children of the King, but in our weakness is He made Strong. How gracious is that? How gracious. The Bible says in Psalms that he is compassionate and gracious, slow to anger, and abounding in loving kindness. And that should be a place that almost takes our breath away, that our God is slow to anger and abounding in loving kindness. That's who we bow our knee before this morning. That's who we worship. That's who we gain our strength. The God who is gracious to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. The God who was gracious to Moses when Moses stood before I am and said, I can't, I won't. I'm... God was gracious. The God who was gracious to Rahab when she knew she didn't deserve any graciousness. The God who was gracious to Nebuchadnezzar, who should have lived the rest of his life crawling about as a wild animal. But God was gracious and gave him his sanity. Back. The Lord is gracious. God, who has been gracious to the nation of Israel, who time and time again turned their backs on him and worshiped other gods, yet what did God do? God was gracious and continued to forgive them more times than anyone could have ever imagined. And think about this. 
Here we sit this morning. Sinners. Sinners. And the God of the universe, for some reason, was gracious to us and chose us before the foundation of the world and revealed to us that we needed a Savior. And because of that graciousness, we can be here privileged to worship I am. Not because of anything that we've done or deserve, but because He is what? Because He is gracious. We have tasted that graciousness. But He's also compassionate, which basically means merciful, isn't it? God is compassionate. He's merciful. He's not an angry God waiting in heaven for someone to mess up so he can take his club and whop you on the side of the head. That's not the God we serve. We serve a God who is gracious and compassionate, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. That's the God that we serve. He is gracious. You know, think about this. The world that we live in, we hear all kinds of things about the God that we serve. I mean, I hear things like this. We, we serve the same God as the Muslims serve. Allah and Elohim are the same. Only their name is different. So we should join together with the people of the world because we all worship the same God. Elohim and Allah just have different names. Well, this verse in itself tells us why that can't be true. Just this verse. Because Elohim is gracious and compassionate. Do you realize that according to the Quran, that Allah is an angry God. According to the Quran itself, Allah is an angry God. He rules by the stick. And he forces those who submit to him to submit out of fear. That's Allah. Allah doesn't have any compassion or graciousness in who he is. In fact, the Quran tells us that you can worship Allah all your life and when you come to the end of your life, he can spit you out like a piece of trash and you will never make it into eternity. That's Allah. Elohim is gracious and compassionate. He is not willing that any should perish. We love Elohim because he first loved us. Aren't you glad that that's who we worship this morning? The Lord is compassionate and gracious. He has given food to those who fear him. He has given food to those who fear him. The idea here in the original language is simply this, that he meets the needs of those who fear him. He meets the needs of those who fear him. And starting for all of us, as we sit down to eat, most of us in this room on a regular basis do what before we eat? We pray. We thank God. Sometimes we even do it without thinking too much because it's just a habit of what we can do. But we have to be reminded again this morning that everything we have is from God, even the food that is provided on our tables. I mean, this became even a more reality for us over the last few months when we heard flashed over the news, there's a shortage of food. Shortage of meat. The food supply is broken. And if you were just looking around, you could kind of get worried a little bit and go, oh, what are we going to do about food? But if you have been living and trusting Jesus, following and walking closely with God, you had calmness because you understood the reality that God is the God who provides all that you need. And you can trust in the Lord with all your heart. 
for your health, for your finances, for your future, for your eternity, and even for the food that you eat. He's given food to those who fear him. He will remember his covenant forever. I like that word again, forever. How long is forever? Forever, forever, forever. It, he doesn't forget. God is mindful of his covenant. In other words, he says what he means, and he means what he says. What he says. That's not true anymore in the world we live in. But God, when he says what he says, he means it. He means what he says. He will never leave or forsake his people because we can count on him. He will remember his covenant forever. We humbly bow before Yahweh this morning. Aren't you glad that we can count on what he says? That he means what he says and he says what he means? I mean, think about this morning. When God says he loves you, he means it. <laughs> it's a reality that will never change. When God says, you don't have to fear, you can count on me. You can bank on that. When he says, this book, his word is true, guess what? You can know that this book, his word, is true. You can count on it. He remembers his covenant when he tells you that your sins are forgiven when you put your faith and trust in Jesus, you can know that your sins are forgiven as far as the east is from the west, never to be remembered against you again because God means what he says and says what he means. He remembers his covenant forever. When he says, look up your redemption draws nigh. You can count on that reality. Jesus is coming again. I heard one little amen. Amen. When he says, look up, your redemption draws nigh, Jesus is coming again. Amen. 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 That's right, for sure. We can count on it. And today... We are 24 hours closer than we were yesterday to his return. You need to be excited. He remembers his covenant forever. And you and I, as his children, can count on that reality. He has made known to his people the power of his works by giving them the heritage of the nations. God has shown his greatness, the greatness of his power, by giving to his people Israel, by giving to his people Israel all that they have ever possessed. Let's stop and let that sink in again. God has shown his power to his people, Israel, by giving them all that they have ever possessed. As we sit here today and we worship Jehovah Shalom, the great I am, as we worship him, we can know and see from history this clear reality. He has made known to his people his power. I mean, let's just go back to when the Israelites were enslaved in Egypt. For 400 years they were there. 400 years they believed in God, but they doubted that he would ever get them out of this situation. He, he was there, but they didn't think that he would ever break their bondage. And then shows up who? Moses, who says to Pharaoh, let my people go. And Pharaoh says, ain't no way I'm letting your people go. So along come the plagues, the flies, the gnats, the blood, the boils, the darkness, the hail, the fire, the locusts, the death of the firstborn. And miraculously, God protected his people. By the time they left Egypt, they knew that they worshiped the God of the universe that had a plan for them, and they walked with him. When they walked into the promised land and walked around Jericho, what did they see? 
the power of God, who had given them the promised land. He has made known to his people the power of his works by giving them the heritage of the nations. What a privilege that we can see that lived out in high definition. The works of his hands are truth and justice. All that God has ever done in creation and providence are all about truth and justice. You and I can count on God for the truth. All that he's done defends the truth, is the truth. You and I are obviously living in some pretty perilous and crazy times. These times have produced an awful lot of fear and confusion in people's lives, haven't they? Maybe even in your lives. I mean, we are living in a time when we are constantly bombarded by a sea of lies. Lies about virtually everything. And lies and fear put together can create a confusion of fatal insecurity. Really, we have little confidence anymore in believing what politicians say. We have little confidence in believing what health officials say. Really, people have little confidence in believing what social activists say or what university professors say or what the media says. We have been lied to so consistently that, that we go, who out there is telling us the truth? Well, today as we sit here and worship I am, you can be confident that as you open up the word of God, that the one who you turn to bears the truth, the everlasting truth that will never, ever change. All of the works of his hands are truth. God is a God of truth that you can count on. But he also is a God of what? Justice, that's a word that we hear an awful lot today, isn't it? God is a God of justice. We hear the word social justice, racial justice, economic justice, political justice. The word justice is thrown around an awful lot in 2020. But you know what? I don't know if people actually want what they're crying out for. Do they really want justice? Because when you look through the biblical lens into life, you see this. Here's justice. For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. Black, red, yellow, white, green, blue, purple. For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. And the wages of Sin for all people is death. Justice? Here's justice. All people who have ever been created on this planet deserve to be separated from the almighty God of the universe for eternity in hell. Doesn't matter what race you are. Doesn't matter what color you are. It doesn't matter what nationality you are. It doesn't matter where you live, where you've grown up, what your history is. 
all people, red, yellow, black, white, blue, green, and purple, justice is eternity in hell. But God, being rich in mercy because of his great love for us, even while we were yet sinners and we deserve justice, Christ died for us. In the midst of justice, where all of us in this room deserve eternity separated from God in hell, in the midst of justice, God provided mercy and grace so that you and I could escape justice. Do you realize that today in 2020 that that's the news that people need to hear? Justice is you are a sinner and you deserve to be separated from God for eternity in hell. But I don't want to say that to somebody. They won't like me. That's justice. But God being rich in mercy because of his great love while you were deserving justice, Christ died so that your sins and my sins could be forgiven. Doesn't matter what color you are. Doesn't matter where you live. For God so loved the entire world. Every pigmentation of this very little piece of skin that separates everything else. So as we finish up our time today, we have to say, thank you, God, that we can worship you. Praise, praise the Lord. I will give thanks to the Lord with all of my heart from my inner being to the tip of my fingers. Great are the works of the Lord. They are studied by all who delight in them. Splendid and majestic is his work. Splendid and majestic is his work. He has made his wonders to be remembered. His, his righteousness endures for how long? Forever. He is gracious and compassionate. He's given food to those who fear him. He will remember his covenant forever. He has made known to his people the works of his hands by giving them the heritage of the nations. We see that in high definition. It's right there. It's proven that's who God is. The works of his hands are what? Truth and justice. Aren't you, aren't you so glad to escape all of that that's stirring out there in the world and bow before Yahweh in humble adoration and gain strength from who he is and enjoy his presence and be reminded of his greatness and be encouraged that you and I can trust him no matter what goes on during the week, no matter what changes happen from this time to that time, no matter what the sinking sand is all around us, we can be firm in our walk with God. Aren't you glad? You don't have to panic. You don't have to fear. He provides food to those who fear Him. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Do not lean on your own understanding in all your ways. Acknowledge Him and He will make your path straight. I am so glad that we have a good family like this. A family that loves the word, that loves to worship. And it's so important as you go through your week that that's a reality that just doesn't happen here. You worship God as you're driving down the road. You lift up his name. 
You speak his word. When the enemy comes against you and says, I'm going to make you depressed this week, you speak the word of God and you say, no, I'm going to be strong in the Lord and the strength of his might. And right now I'm putting on the full armor of God so that I can stand firm against these crazy schemes of the devil. My loins are girded with the truth of Jesus and his word. And my heart is protected with the breastplate of righteousness that comes through him. My feet are shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace that reminds me that I know that salvation is in Jesus. I take up that shield of faith because the enemy is throwing things at me. He may use my wife. He may use your husband. He may use your neighbor, your friend. But he's going to throw some things at you and say, you can't trust God. You can't worship God. You can't rely on him. And you just put up that shield of faith and you say, you know what? I'm going to walk by faith, not by sight. Because the things that are seen are what? Temporal, but the things that are not seen are eternal. Woo. Then you put on that helmet, huh? Helmet of salvation that protects your mind that says, I am secure in Jesus Christ. My salvation is eternal. It will never be taken away from me, and I know that. So I don't have to fear. And then I whip out my sword, the rhema word of God, and I use my sword and quote the word of God when the enemy comes against me. And then I don't forget to pray. Pray at all times in the spirit. With all prayer and petition. With this in mind, be on the alert. Be on the alert. Be on the alert. Pray for all the saints. Pray for Franco and Kathy and Mike and Barbara and Tom and Sharon and Lisa. Pray for them. Pray for the saints. Because people, even in this room, have to deal with the stuff, huh? But we all know that we can praise the Lord. Yahweh is the God that we worship. Father, we thank you this morning that we can be in your presence. We soak in your presence this morning. We breathe in your presence. We need your presence. We love your presence. Without your presence, we are weak. But in our weakness, are you made strong? Pray for each and every person as we as your children walk through this week that we will be strong in you in the strength of your might. Use your word to continue to feed us and give us the courage that we need. May the words of our mouth and the meditation of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O oh Lord, our rock and our redeemer. We pray this in your powerful name, Jesus, and all God's people said, Amen. Hey, you guys have a great, powerful week.